I think about how many people get to the edge of making wrong mistakes in their life, and if they just stop and think, okay, God, what would you have me to do? Yeah. He never gives wrong instructions. Yeah. Sometimes they're tough, but He always gives you the right answer. And I look back, and I've got a number of big uh, Mile markers. Yeah, mile markers, <laughs> yeah. where God challenged me, and I obeyed Him. And I think I can say this with my face in the mud, in humility, <laughs> that God has never failed to keep a promise. He, you know, my, my whole life can be wrapped up in obey God and leave all the consequences to Him. When it's His will, He will give you a sense of peace. Now you say, what, what do you mean by peace? I mean, there will be a sense of quietness in your spirit. There will be no sense of irritation going on within you. There will not be any crowding of doubts into your mind. You won't be asking somebody else, what do you think? When you have the peace of God, there's this overwhelming sense of, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. You, and somebody says, well, I don't know that I've ever had that feeling. It's because you haven't stopped to ask God, Lord, what would you have me to do? Listen. Watch this. God's not going to keep a secret from you when you want to do the right thing. He's going to show you what to do every time. And that should start early in life. Nothing. And um, I would drive by once in a while and think, gosh. But uh, at least my family is here, and I'm very, very grateful. Well, I've been a pastor for 68 years. I've been, in, I've been at uh, First Baptist for about uh, almost 50. I'm 86. I love every minute of it. The other alternative is to be gone. <laughs> so what I want to do is to give you a little glimpse of the most basic, powerful principle you'll ever learn in ministry. Did you get that? You can quote me on it. And if you leave here and uh, you don't believe it, you can see me at the door. <laughs> and I'll send you to the president. <laughs> I want to read a very familiar passage of scripture from Proverbs chapter 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. And then listen to this. Do not be wise in your own eyes. That'll get you in trouble. Well, the way I learned that principle was I had been a pastor in um, North Carolina, in a very small village church, and then in Ohio, and in Miami, Florida, Bartow, Florida, and then I came to First Baptist against my will. I did not want to come because it meant I was to come as an associate pastor. I didn't like the pastor. He was theologically way out in left field over the fence. And there was nothing about the church that would attract me to Atlanta, Georgia. But here's how God operates oftentimes. Sometimes he'll give us a little signal of what he's going to do without telling us what it is. And um, I remember vividly I was up in uh, Virginia preaching a revival and uh, got ready to go to bed that night and I, I couldn't sleep so I just began to pray and ask the Lord to speak to my heart. And um, that happened about three nights in a row and then on the next night I got down to pray and um, I just felt like, well, where is God? Well, what, 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 what is this all about? And on this big screen I'm in this little motel room. It's big screen, left-hand corner, top right-hand corner, in big, bold, black letters, September. I thought, what? I've only been in Bartow less than two years. So I knew God was saying something to me. So I thought about it a little bit. The next night, I preached and came home the next night. Monday morning, I got up, and um, I had a telephone call. And it was from a friend of mine who was on the pulpit committee of the First Baptist Church of Atlanta. 
And he started telling me about how they needed a pastor and so forth and on. I said, uh, 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 Philip, uh, uh, not Philip, but uh, Felix, I'm not, I'm not, I have no interest in that whatsoever. So when we hung up, I broke out crying for no reason at all, just weeping. And so six months later, after them sending a pulpit committee down to see me six times, I didn't want to go. I didn't like anything about it. I was going to be an associate pastor with a pastor I had no respect for whatsoever. But I knew God told me to go. So I learned a lot in that process of how God works and how he operates. And so finally, the Lord straightened out my heart about it all. And I went. I was so popular. They gave me an office with a desk, but never gave me the keys to open the door. <laughs> no. I'd been there a few months, and um, so seven men were on this committee, and they sort of ran everything. So I was attending the committee, and uh, they were trying to make a decision about something, and they kept him hauling around about it and couldn't make a decision. So I just, as an associate pastor with no, no authority and no reputation, I said, well, why, why don't we just pray about this? There were three attorneys, one judge, and th two other guys on this committee. And their quick response was, leave God out of this. This is business. <laughs> well, I knew that war was coming. So I was there about two years before this all happened, before what I'm going to tell you happened. And um, then they set out to get rid of me because they realized that this whole idea of being obedient to God was foreign to them. They ran everything all the time. And um, so I saw what was coming. And what was coming was they were going to do their best to, to fire me. And uh, Charles Stanley was born on 25th September 1932 and died April 18th, 2023. was an American Southern Baptist pastor and writer. He was a senior pastor of First Baptist Church in Atlanta for 49 years and took an emeritus status in 2020. He founded and was president of In Touch Ministries, which widely broadcasts his sermons through television and radio. He also served two one-year terms as president of the Southern Baptist Convention from 1984 to 1986. Stanley joined the staff of First Baptist Church of Atlanta in 1969 and became senior pastor in 1971. In 1972, Stanley launched a half a half hour religious television program called the chapel hour in 1977 stanley founded in touch ministries with a mission to lead people worldwide into a growing relationship with jesus christ and to strengthen the local church the christian broadcasting network began televising in touch in 1978 the show has since been translated in 50 languages in the United States. In Touch is broadcast on approximately 500 radio stations, 300 television stations, and several satellite networks, including the Inspiration Network and Trinity Broadcasting Network. Stanley's sermons, along with other radio and video programming, are available on the In Touch website. The ministry also publishes In Touch magazine. In Touch uses tools like radio, television magazines, and digital media in its effort to advance the gospel as quickly as possible. Stanley took the ministry name In Touch from a living Bible he owned.